Okay, welcome back. Um, it's a series of small videos on the Building Template Manager. We've just spoken about how you define a system under Apache Systems, and then you can actually define it within the space template itself, so that you've now defined the basics of it. And there's, there's a little bit of things that you can adjust, not much necessarily. The next factor that you can define while you've only defined the, the space systems and nothing more, is actually the heating and cooling profiles and the hot water consumption profiles. Now, you'll see here, um, the heating profile at the moment says that heating will be continuously on. Now, important to remember, if you are defining it as naturally ventilated, which means in your systems, you've basically said that there isn't any heating and cooling taking place, then really, you can do what you like. Um, your heating profile can be on, but it's not going to run. It's it's there's nothing happening, which means it will it will certain simply just not assume it to run, and you and you'll be able to see that it's not working. It will be considered as a poor system. If we go back and say, now wait a minute, we actually do want an air conditioning system. So remember, we've actually defined in the previous video, we've defined there to be an, an, an office air conditioned system that's available. Now the office air conditioned system, we didn't define much in terms of air conditioning. We simply said, you know what, there is a, a, um, a air conditioning that runs and we've defined the, the seasonal um, coefficient of productivity or the SCOP, um, which just says how much energy gets generated from the amount of energy I put and and we and you're not mechanical engineers you're not going to design that in the end okay which means now if you if there is going to be a heating heating cooling taking place then it's important that you define the profile now and this is difficult if you're in a space where it is actually continuously on i mean there's older buildings where that is actually the the fact that's the nature i mean the, the SOBS buildings for instance which is close to where i live those air conditioners have run through the whole of the, the lockdown that we had in the beginning of last year. Um, so so you, it can just be simply on. And you'll see then you, 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 the heater will be on, but it will only switch on when the heating set point is defined. So when the temperature drops below 19 degrees Celsius, then you can say, okay, wait a minute, it switches on. It's fine. 19 is a generally, generally a good... Um, heating and cooling set point um, for the South African conditions. Um, yeah, I think that's. I, I would keep 19 as a as, as a um, basic heating set point. So saying that if the temperature is below 19, we will switch it on. Um, the hot water consumption DHW. Um, yeah, you can actually start saying how much everybody uses, but like I said in the past, it's not completely your problem. Um, although, if you want to calculate the energy consumption as a whole, then maybe you would like to, um, you would not want to include that. And there, if you link it to occupancy, the consumption pattern, I think you, you should be accurate. I mean, I don't think hot water gets used in any other way necessarily. So, when there's people, you'll be using X amount of litres per hour per person, and then we know how many people there will be. The cooling runs in a sense, similar manner. If it's con on continuously, then you just keep it as it is, and you'll say with this cooling set point, which 23 is a good figure, but in South Africa, we actually define 25. So we say if any temperature is above 25, the coolers, the cooling or air conditioner switches on, and it starts cooling. Now, you can also say, you know what, that's not actually accurate. We live in a place where, where people only do it when they're there. There's a sensor or we switch it on and off and it means the air conditioner only runs during the occupancy stages. It's not actually accurate because air conditioners don't run like that. Air conditioners actually have a ramp up period before and afterwards, which means, um, or, you know, so, so an hour or two beforehand, it starts running and switching on because you can't, I mean, everybody can't, if they arrive at eight o'clock, you can't suddenly have amazing cool available so so again that profile you might want to extend that profile for an hour before and an hour afterward um, to have a more accurate and um, analysis of what the the energy inputs would be 
But as you can see, you can also define the actual occupancy of that or the switching on and off of that to give us an idea of what the energy use is, which might be a newer buildings do try to do that. They don't keep the air conditioner on at full blast all the time. Things like solar refraction and furniture factor and so forth, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't fiddle with that. That's um, generally just, um, just, just keep it as it is. Okay, so the next video we will start working with the internal gains and the air exchanges, and um, then we will deal with construction technology. So it's just the final part of air conditioning systems.